TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Well, I don't know. Everyone has a podcast now. Well, not really. What is true is that, according to Nielsen statistics, 55% of the U.S. population, that's over 155 million people, have listened to a podcast, and 24% of the population, that's 68 million people, listen to podcasts weekly. And these numbers continue to trend upward. What's also true is that over 75% of all podcasts fade away after the first few episodes. It could be for a variety of reasons, lack of strong concept, poor production value, people not realizing how much time needs to be dedicated to it, or simply just not knowing how to get the word out about podcasts. That's where WeKnowPodcasting.com comes in. At WeKnowPodcasting.com, we have a combined 25 years of podcast experience, and we can help you achieve your podcasting goals. Whether you need help starting a new podcast or want to take your currently active podcast to the next level, we got you. From consultations to concept development, from theme music to editing, promotion, animation, graphics, you name it and we're here to help. Don't become another failed podcast statistic. Let us guide you and help your show become a success. Check out the website at WeKnowPodcasting.com. And even if you're on the fence, don't hesitate to reach out. We're friendly guys, we're passionate about pods, and we're here to help. gotta overdo it i gotta outdo me it has been musical month here on christmas 365 yeah and smack dab in the middle of it we got to talk about one of my least favorite musicals of all time well listen we're not gonna talk about the whole musical we're gonna analyze a song that i feel like has been up for debate on if it's actually a christmas song for a really long time yeah before we get into that though we got a voicemail on our instagram that we got to address we did. It's and it's one of the first times that I've ever been corrected in my life, but it also brought a tear to my eye in like a special way. So apologies to our listener. Juan came on and didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Yeah, no, we're in the clear. Uh no, but for real, we got a we got a really lovely it was three voice memos sent to us yeah. by a listener named Andy. I mean, we can play the we'll play the voicemails. It's about a two minute voicemail, but we'll play them here. Hi guys, I'm Andy. I'm pretty much a random guy for you, but I really enjoy your podcast, like Christmas 365. And I just started listening to it a few days ago. And I just noticed one little thing in some episode. I believe it it came out on January 4th. It it was called December 2 December. (laughs) Something about wrestling. You just said that you were decorating your Christmas tree with spider webs and spiders. And you told that you did this because Ukrainians do this. Like, it's a Ukrainian tradition. So, like, no hate towards y'all. But just for you to know, 
so we don't really do this actually so it's it's kind of a disinformation i'm i did a little research on this topic and i found out that there is some exhibition in chicago where like traditional christmas trees of uh, different countries are presented and there are spider webs on ukrainian christmas tree like we 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 never have done this before and we don't do this actually i have literally no idea where this came from but like j just for you to know no hate no like <laughs> disrespect or something to you both but it's just just for you to know so we don't do this it's, it's kind of a disinformation i don't know who, who who does this but this is the thing but i really enjoy your podcast and i i listen to it while being at work actually i just got hired a few days ago and i just started listening to this podcast while being in office i believe <laughs> english is not my native language but uh, thank you for giving me christmas vibes uh, throughout the summer <laughs> and stuff good luck so it was like it was kind of it was kind of cool i mean here's the thing it wasn't cool to be corrected i felt bad that we had been spreading yeah but i mean even he did his research and was like apparently this started from some shit in in chicago so it's like all right yeah so, like, so even if it was one of us which it wasn't it was one even if it was <laughs> one of us we don't have to feel so bad because somebody put this misinformation out there and we never claim to be the christmas podcast with the most information but we are the christmas podcast with the most spirit my friends oh i was gonna say the most cursing but sure, but sure spirit. <laughs> cursing as well but spirit <laughs> cursing they go hand in hand as much as it's awkward to be corrected on something that i had nothing to do with i just you know making sure i'm spotless here but to know that there are people that listen to our show and are just like yo I gotta, I gotta correct this. Was like the most heartwarming shit of the day. <laughs> well, that was the thing. Like you, you sent me the messages. It was so heartwarming, and and like I said earlier, not everybody wants to be corrected, but it was like one of those moments where I'm like, holy shit! Like people are actually listening to us. So like, yeah. if you're listening to us right now, no matter where you are, know that. We really, really appreciate it. It's it's crazy that in August we have people all over the world listening to two guys just, you know, celebrate their love for a holiday. And and it warms my Christmas heart even more. Like Oh, for sure. I I mean, Andy, I'm not saying that the podcast was gonna go away, but I'm yeah. saying that your message may have guaranteed it to go in another year. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like man. I'm sitting in a hot, sweaty ass loft <laughs> talking about as, Christmas time. <laughs> as someone who has spent the night in that loft can confirm, yeah, hot like, and sweaty. But like to know, like, <laughs> hey, you know what? Us talking about this Christmassy shit during the yeah. hot, sweaty months isn't going unnoticed. Like that, that really does mean a lot. So let's talk about some Christmassy shit. And maybe debatably Possibly so so Christmas you had shit. you had already played your hand a little bit on this I am very yeah. lukewarm to the sound of music uh, yeah I'm I'm all out on the sound of music my dad absolutely loves it he, he, he'll watch it all the time but I'm just it's long and it comes on what's it freeform now ABC Probably, Family, yeah. Fox Family whatever the hell they're calling it now it comes on there and they turn a two hour musical into a four hour musical because like that's that's what you do when you show movies on TV. I gotta check, Dylan. I think it's actually a three hour long. Is it really? Movie. I think oh it's even God. longer than you're imagining it is. God. And I had friends who were in it at our local theater and God bless them. I love them all to death, but I'm sorry, if if I never watch Sound of Music again, I will be a much more pleasant person and it's, it's just so boring like i appreciate the songs in it i love my favorite things certain versions of it i love like doe a deer a female deer like i love all that the music's amazing but the show itself I was pulling up the soundtrack just for that purpose because i'm like i know it's got that some I, bangers yeah i know there, that are, there certified are songs bangers. i bangers like. Yeah. On the Sound of Music soundtrack. All right, so Sound of Music, The Hills Arrive, whatever. How do you solve a problem like Maria? Fine. Yeah, 
my favorite things, good song. Do re mi, good song. I really like the Lonely Goat Herder. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, a good song too, dude. Like I'm a big fan of that. That's kind of where most of it ends, except for Edelweiss. Yeah. Uh, I guess So Long Farewell's fine, but like. So is is next week when we get the voice memo from somebody in Austria who's like, "The Sound of Music is the greatest musical ever made." Well, I think or, they're gonna more so complain <laughs> about that accent, but. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry to any of our Austrian listeners that you just had to endure that. With The Sound of Music and uh, my favorite things. So there's a Philly musician named Brian Fritzy. And he is a multi-instrumentalist. And he's one of those loop pedal musicians where he'll play like the drums. He'll beatbox. He'll play some bass. He'll play some guitar. He'll play some violin. And he'll loop it through a loop pedal and then create like songs live that way. Oh, very cool. But one Christmas, he put out a holiday EP, and it was like the Brian Fitzy 3 or something like that. And it was him playing violin, his buddy playing jazz guitar, and a drummer. And it was just like this, like walking through coals at Christmas, easy listening yeah. instrumental music. And it was really, really good. But it has this eight-minute version of my favorite things on there. And that was the first time that I ever really like... I don't know if that's a Christmas song. And then like from that moment, I constantly was hearing it pop up on Christmas shit and being like, I don't know if this is a Christmas song. And I think even when we did our Christmas live stream, this came up during like the Christmas song playlist discussion of like, yeah. why does this count? <laughs> like, All right. So my favorite things is a Christmas song to me for the reason that a lot of weird things are Christmas things to me. Family Force 5 did a cover of it for their Christmas pageant EP, and <laughs> okay. I love their version. I love Soul Glow I'm so sure, much. I'm sure it's good. We've talked about Soul, Soul Glow very often in the last <laughs> couple months. We do. We uh, need to have them on. So here's what Genius.com says about the song. My Favorite Things is one of the most popular pieces from the famous musical The Sound of Music. It is often sung as a Christmas song, though it doesn't mention the holiday, nor does the scene take place near winter. So the only <laughs> so. thing that I can, and I've not that I've done extensive research on it, but according to the Wikipedia page, and if you Google... How did My Favorite Things become a Christmas song? Apparently, like, the first time it was associated with Christmas is Julie Andrews sang it during the Gary Moore holiday special around 1961. So even before they filmed the movie, she apparently sang it for the holidays. But, I mean, the, the song's about presents and, and having some of your favorite things. And, and I think you and I can definitely identify with Christmas related items being our favorite things. Ooh, okay. So I'm taking a look at okay. uh, a few things on the wiki page. And the one that's jumping out at me that I definitely want to check out later is that Herb Albert did a version of this uh, with the Tijuana yeah. Brass Band. And I love me some Herb Albert. First of all, I just want to hear his entire Christmas album, <laughs> but I definitely <laughs> want to hear his version of a few of my favorite things. I might be pulling up that album. <laughs> After like we're right done, now, right after we're moment. done recording and seeing if any of those songs are going to make it onto the Christmas playlist, so let's break it down verse by verse, real quick. Okay, I love that our song breakdowns they they continue on this week. One week we covered Santa Claus is a fat bitch by the Insane Clown Posse, mm -hmm. and this week we will be talking my favorite things made popular yeah. by Julie Andrews. Yeah, basically the exact same thing. It's totally fine. Yeah. So raindrops on roses, whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles, and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. So I'll give the warm mittens, right? And yeah. the brown paper packages, packages tied up with... Yeah, okay. okay Which is so still so funny because this song was not even... Like, the song was written for a scene that doesn't even take place during the winter. Well, I think it's just, hey, this is the shit that I like. This is the shit that I like. It's 95 degrees in August. So Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Second verse. Cream-colored ponies and crisp apple strudels. Doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles. Wild geese that fly with the moon on their wings. These are a few of my favorite things. So I got a couple. So obviously sleigh bells. Sleigh bells. Christmas. Yeah. Who has doorbells as one of their favorite things in the world that they're keeping along with crisp apple strudel and schnitzel and like watching geese fly 
against the moon. And also, man, I love a doorbell. <laughs> like, like top 10 favorite things in the world. Yeah, she was yeah. like, doorbells is on it. All right. So then we get to the third verse. And it's really just these three verses and then the chorus repeat it twice. So the third verse, girls in white dresses and blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver white winters that melt into springs. These are a few of my favorite things. That's probably the most Christmassy, I would Definitely. say. And you can, you can, that, that creates a visual in your head even of winter slowly fading out and becoming spring. Yeah, this and, is a um, great like New Year's Eve maybe leading into like even like February, you know, like this is like January vibes. There we go. I feel like. We have a February song. Yeah. And then the chorus obviously has really nothing to do with Christmas. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, or when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember my favorite things. And then I don't feel so bad. A very pretty song. It's got a very sweet message. It's a high point of a very boring musical. I'm not sold on it on a Christmas no, song. No, I'm, I'm not <laughs> sold on it being a Christmas song. To me, it is. But that's because I associate that band with what I would listen to around that time. I'm For not sure. actively choosing my favorite things to listen to around Christmas time. But sometimes that song will come on on my Christmas playlist, that version specifically. I have no other version of that song on there. And I'll be like, eh, I like this song. I'll, I'll leave it on. It's catchy. It is definitely a song that gets stuck in your head. But I will send you this Brian Fitzy cover because okay. I think for me, it is my favorite version of okay. my favorite things. Tell me you can't listen to this and just imagine yourself walking through a packed mall, <laughs> just looking at shit in the Coles or the JC Pennies as this is just like playing loud over the speakers, right? I still don't think that convinces me that it's a Christmas song, but that's definitely a good version of my favorite things. Oh, for sure. And and don't get the rest of that album. The version that they do of Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire is yeah. also strong competitor for my favorite version of that song because it's like, I've learned that as I've gotten older, I have turned into the old man who just wants to listen to like easy listening jazz music sometimes. Yeah, I mean, so, my like soundtrack for driving has increasingly become like lo-fi hip hop or, or like jazz arrangements of video game music. Yeah, I need to be in a certain mood to go hard. Yeah. I want to bring up something real quick that has nothing to do with Christmas, but it bring does it have up, something buddy. that's near near and dear to both of us. Yeah. Have you heard the newest MGK song, Paper Cuts? Paper Cuts? No, I have not. I've seen it all over my Facebook page and everything. And so I saw that he put out a new song. I saw like a brief snippet of it on TikTok. And then I saw like a picture from the music video, like he's rocking like a black wig or something. Here's here's my problem with paper cuts. Okay, okay, hold on. What's your what is your opinion on the his entire album? I enjoyed the tickets to my downfall. Yeah, I thought tickets to my yeah. downfall was really good, and it's in the same vein that I put a band like AJR. Yeah, um, where yeah, it's no, like, it's this is harmless. This isn't amazing. But this is something that I enjoy. I will listen to this, and these songs will definitely get stuck in my head. So I'm going to nuke this song for you in just a couple seconds. Okay. But I saw someone else post this, and I read it, and I was like, come on now. And then I listened to the song yeah. and was like, oh, God, they're right. Is he's uh -oh. like... He said, is anyone else bothered by the fact that MGK just blatantly ripped off Where Is My Mind by the Pixies and then a verse later just blatantly ripped off Green Day Brain Stew and gave no credit whatsoever so it's, to the So musicians. they're not even considered like samples? Like it's just... Yeah, like literally the song opens up with a guitar doing like the dun 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 and then when the music kicks in, it's just him on the guitar doing dun 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 and I'm like, dude, at least acknowledge it like 
Yeah, no, this is like a throwback to like different punk from like, yeah. like the music that inspired the music that I'm playing out. Like just no acknowledgement of it. And I'm like, dude, come on. Like, I appreciate that you're bringing back this sound of music that was so important. Yeah. To my childhood, the sound of music. The sound uh, of Jesus. But, yeah, it all but, comes full circle. Dude, at least give proper credits. Like you can't just be like, "Well, Travis is here, so it's all good." Like, <laughs> like I have, I have my own like issues. I haven't heard the song yet, so I'm not gonna super comment on that. I'll listen to it as I'm soon. I'm mixed as we're on done. MGK as a person but, in general. Yeah, but. I'm mixed on MGK as a person. MGK genre switch became like the thing that every fucking solo artist is doing now like yeah. any like s- sing rapper out there is now trying to make a pop punk album and which honestly it does make sense yeah the song structure they're the same yeah song these people who are making hip-hop are fans of blink 182 yeah and i feel like what mgk did i don't want to say that it's them chasing the clout right yeah i think it's more that like mgk was the first one to be like fuck it, let's just make a Blink-182 record. And then it was almost like a bunch of people were like, oh, I didn't realize that that was an option. I would much rather do that. Yeah, I think my my biggest issues are when like Blink-182 and Green Day and New Found Glory, when all of that was like in its prime, these bands still sounded different. Oh yeah, Green Day did not sound like New Found Glory and they did not sound like Blink and they didn't sound like Sum 41. Like every one of them had... A different unique this sound right now is like that music sounds very similar dylan i think we have absolutely covered as much as we possibly could on this topic i think so too so, dude and and if you are a lover of my favorite things out there i apologize i don't have a lot to say about the song i'm not a huge fan of the musical i like a cover by a christian crunk core band and, <laughs> and that's about all i have to say about it man well, <laughs> in signing off, Dylan, you're one of my favorites. Oh, things. Matt, you're like my number one favorite thing, buddy. Merry Christmas, bud. Merry Christmas. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, 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 now we won't stop till the big ball drops on New Year's. Have a happy, happy, happy holiday. Have a great, great, great holiday. Have a merry, 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 happy holiday. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.